All right, Charlie Schramm, who is an early Bitcoin adopter and an enthusiast in this space, he just put himself on record. He says, owning five to 10 Bitcoin will change your life in 20 years. Specifically, the quote is this. He says, hide five to 10 Bitcoin in a cold wallet so that you can't access them for 20 years. I really think that in 20 years, five to 10 Bitcoin will be money that will change your life. Everything else can be spent as you wish. Hey, I don't know about you, but owning five to 10 Bitcoin right now could change my life. Welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron. In today's video, I wanna talk about how to think about Bitcoin as an investor. So we're gonna put the past 11 years in perspective, talk about how Bitcoin was perceived and then think forward to the future. How is Bitcoin going to be perceived in the future? So make sure you like the video, support the channel. And I actually wanna start, I know we started with talking about 20 years down the line, but I actually wanna shorten our horizon a, a little bit. I mean, obviously as an investor, it would be smart if you were thinking 20 years down the line as Charlie Schramm pointed out. But let's actually talk about what could happen with Bitcoin in the next two to three years, possibly, probably by the end of 2021. Although as we get into this video, you will see why you might not wanna, you might wanna keep holding past 2021. But let's start from the beginning. Let's put this in perspective. Let's get everybody on the same page. Let's define where we are right now. Bitcoin has been around for 11 years. Today, the awareness has never been greater. The strength of the network today has never been greater. This is the first cycle where people truly believe that Bitcoin is here to stay, which is totally different than how Bitcoin was perceived in the past cycles. So this is truly the first time where people are going through an awakening and a trusting of Bitcoin's ability to sustain itself in the future, which is pretty amazing. And because we're seeing this, and again, this is the first time this has happened in Bitcoin's history, we're also seeing this interest from institutions and people in the traditional financial world. Again, as they wake up and realize that Bitcoin is here to stay and they understand it, its monetary policy. So let's listen to an expert on this. I wanna hear from somebody who's actually in the financial world and understands how they think. And I'm gonna recommend this podcast for you. It's the Stephen Lavera podcast. And in it, they usually talk about Bitcoin and Austrian economics. I listen all the time. In this episode, he has a guy named Preston Pish, who is the co-host of the Investors Podcast. This is a globally ranked traditional investment podcast. So Lavera has on Preston, who is from the traditional financial world, and he just also happens to be very bullish, not only on Bitcoin, but also on the traditional financial space, waking up and understanding that they will be interested in Bitcoin too, and, and more specifically, what this is gonna look like. So let's listen to Preston talk and let's listen, listen to why he thinks that this next slash current cycle is going to be big. So he's going to start off by talking about how Bitcoin is an uncorrelated asset and it, he says it has a strong sharp ratio. And this basically means that Bitcoin has outperformed every other asset since 2014 by a mile. And this is going to interest people in the traditional finance space a lot. And even people who don't understand Bitcoin, they're, they're, going to, they're going to feel compelled to get into Bitcoin even a little bit as they see the market cap, i.e. social proof, increase. And then he goes on, he talks about the flippening where he says, eventually there will be a turning point where you will be looked down upon if you or your fund is not exposed to Bitcoin. Again, this is the Stephen Lavera podcast. Link to the whole thing is in the description. Like the video, support the channel, check this out. I absolutely think that this is the most exciting point to sell on Bitcoin is really kind of the sharp ratio matched with the fact that it doesn't have correlation to all the other assets. I think where you're having trouble getting traction on it is first of all, most people in finance do not understand this technology and they don't buy into the idea that it's safe at this point because they don't understand it. You're never going to think something's safe unless you inherently understand how it works and how it functions. Now, where I think you're going to have a psychological bias that overrides that lack of understanding is when a market cap in Bitcoin reaches a level that your, your typical investor just says, you know what, maybe I'm just, I just don't understand it. Obviously people do because the market cap's $1 trillion. And so then they're going to say, they're just going to default to their, the lazy part of their mind that says social proof has decided that this is something that I need to participate in. And so I think we're waiting for that to happen. And so it's just going to be a little bit of time before that gets in there. I think the other part from a, from the financial sector standpoint is I think when you get Bitcoin settled derivatives in place, 
You're then going to have ETFs that get approved. And then you're going to have vehicles that are so much easier for the day-to-day -day investor to just throw a hundred bucks or even a thousand bucks or 10,000 bucks at Bitcoin because their friends are making a thousand percent return last year, right? <laughs> like that's, the that's going to be, in my opinion, this bull market that's getting ready to happen that I think we are just starting to experience that I think is going to easily run to the start or basically the end of 2021. Um, is going to be the ETF derivative Wall Street getting on board bull market um, when when we look back at it. And I think most of it's going to be because we have backed, we have Bitcoin settled, you're going to ETFs and you're going to have all these people saying, you know, it wouldn't hurt to just have a half a percent exposure. That's going to be the narrative that I think you're going to hear Wall Street saying in about a year from now. Right. Yeah. It's fascinating how, because we're sort of a little more insider or we have a little bit more connection with it, we're sort of able to see it beforehand. And part of it is that we realize just how small it is right now. Uh, and uh, to, to the points you were making as well, it's also that point around uh, career risk as well. So I think it may, right now it's still seen as, oh, Bitcoin's still a little bit of a weird thing. But eventually once the first few influential people start getting it, eventually it hits that tipping point of the career risk goes the other way of if you don't hold Bitcoin, now there'll be the question asked of why didn't you buy something? Yeah, there's going to be a flippening. I, I mean, my personal opinion is that there's going to be a flippening of it, um, of that point of view. And I think that there is a lot of career risk for a lot of uh, fund managers at this point, because truly when you're talking about something that has a market cap of call it $200 billion, like Bitcoin is today, I think the thing that, in my personal opinion, the thing that really got my attention was the sharp ratio. When I looked at the chart of the sharp ratio from 2013, and you're looking at something that has that high of a sharp ratio with no correlation to anything else. I'm just thinking, my God, that's the holy grail of of an investment that I have ever seen. And I mean, it's not like the sharp ratio has outperformed in some parts of the year since 2013 versus other assets. It has absolutely crushed by a landslide every single other asset that existed since 2013. The US stock market, the commodities market, the bond market, any other currency, emerging markets. I mean, you name it, and Bitcoin has outperformed it without even a blemish of a day since 2013. All right. As I mentioned at the top of this video, Preston Pish is so bullish on the next cycle, he might not even sell at, you know, what everybody is thinking the top is going to be at the end of the year 2021. He says that he might not even sell Bitcoin at, at the supposed top of the next cycle just because Bitcoin is entering a whole new phase where it's truly going to be seen and being seen as a world currency and a world store of value. And of course, we're in the very early stages of this now, but in the next coming years, as this cycle develops, well, listen. My opinion is I don't necessarily know that this next cycle, assuming we do go through another bull market, which I think we will, um, I don't necessarily think that I would sell on the next uh, bull market because I'm afraid that um, this could be a point where Bitcoin really kind of moves into a whole different level of how it's viewed as a currency. Where back then, I definitely didn't think that it was at that point. I thought I felt that you had many more years ahead for it to kind of reach that status. And luckily, that was a good assumption because it could have been a, a bad assumption, I guess, at the time. But at the time, that was my that was my opinion. Right, and I think. Perhaps you were speaking as well to this idea that at that point in 2017, we didn't really have Lightning Network going. We didn't really have all these ways to kind of easily transact back and forward. I mean, yes, there are on-chain transactions, but it, it's just it, it just wasn't at the level, I suppose, in terms of broad mainstream understanding acknowledgement of Bitcoin as a potential currency and as a potential money. Would that be your view? Absolutely. So I was, um, I remember that. December, I was at an Army Navy football game. I'm in a box talking to a bunch of bankers, people that are very high up in the banking sector. From so I went to West Point. They're, these were alumni that were pretty accomplished alumni, and I remember I brought up Bitcoin, and they just looked at me and almost laughed. They were just like, "Yeah, right." <laughs> you know, it was kind of right. like, Wait, are, "Are you kidding? Are you are you serious right now? Or are you joking?" And I just kind of looked at them like, "I'm I'm kind of serious, I guess." And um, I think for me that was really obvious that you know this was not at a point where anybody. Uh, was talking about it in a way that they took that serious. I find those conversations are very different now. Um, I still think that they're not at maturity by any shape of the imagination, but I think maybe another year or two, it, it'll be it'll be an absolute, um, at, at a point where everyone absolutely understands what you're talking about. They understand the arguments. They understand whether they have a position or not is unknown, but they're going to look at it in a completely different light, in my opinion. It is something to think about. It's something to think about. You know, of course, there are people who are going to say Bitcoin could never reach this point. It's a, it's a, it's a pipe dream. And in a way, they're right in that 
it is risky. Nobody's saying it's not risky. It's obviously very risky. In my opinion, the potential upside is so great that I can't see how anybody, if they understand what this is, how they wouldn't invest one, three, five percent of their overall investment portfolio into Bitcoin. I mean, uh, I think the potential upside outweighs the potential downside, which is zero. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Um, do you tend to agree with Preston? Have you listened to this podcast? Do you like this podcast? Let me know down below.